Happy Sunday, kids! Thank you for being with us this Sunday service. And I know you're excited as well for the new lesson today, right? Hmm. So welcome to another episode of our summer road trip, Disney World. Wow, it's the happiest place on earth, as they always say. So I wonder you've been to a great vacation as well, right? Travel destination this summer. So whatever or wherever that is, I hope you have enjoyed it. But before that, let's go on with our lesson for today. I know God has a store for something, something to, for all of us. So um, you guys have your souvenirs, right? From your travel destination, maybe. Our world offers, uh, offers us some amazing vacation getaways. Disney World, Gatlinburg, Miracle Beach, Panama City, or you just have your own on your pocket list. Okay, these places are paradise on earth. The perfect place you get away to relax, to have fun. Hmm. But all of these places pale in comparison with the paradise God is preparing for us. God wants us, all of us, to get to heaven. He wants us to go so badly. He sent His Son Jesus to pay the price of admission for us. If we believe in Jesus, we will punch our ticket to an eternity in the greatest paradise any of us will ever see. Life is a journey. Do you know the destination? Accept Jesus today and you will know for sure where you will spend eternity.
When you hit the road on vacation, the road can take many twists and turns. You can find yourself in tourist traps. You can find yourself in some scary rest stops. You can sleep in some yucky motels. You can eat some really gross takeout food. But when your eyes are on the prize, all these hardships are worth it. You know what's waiting at the end of the road and you know it will be paradise. There are many paradise vacations destinations. Some people's paradise is Hawaii, a place where you can enjoy sandy beaches, warm sunshine, and fresh pineapples. Some people think Gatlin Bridge is a paradise with its quiet mountain trails, unique shopping and family attractions but for most kids and many parents there's one that stands above them all disney world disney world is a true vacation paradise a place with the greatest hotels the greatest rides and the greatest shows and the greatest experiences where else can you wake up see african animals roaming outside your hotel window, have lunch with Cinderella, take a boat ride with pirates, lock lightsabers with Darth Vader, and end the day with fireworks. For the last several weeks, we've followed the Israelites on their journey to the Promised Land, the land that God had sworn to give to their forefathers. The Israelites faced many challenges on the road to the Promised Land and they had disobeyed God many times. Their sin was so great. God had vowed they would not enter the promised land themselves, but their children would go instead. As our story concludes today, the Israelites are about to enter the promised land. Moses, their leader, has brought them up to the edge of the promised land, but God has forbidden him for entering the land because of his own sin. Yet, God was gracious enough to let Moses have a pick before he passed away. God's New Leader for Israel, Deuteronomy 31 through 34. God had delivered the Israelites from slavery into Egypt and had led them to the land he had promised them. But when ten of the twelve Israelite spies reported giants and great walled cities in the land, the people were afraid and refused to go. Two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, were not afraid and said, We can do it. God is with us. The people refused to trust God. They wanted to return to Egypt instead. Because of their disobedience, God made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years until everyone over the age of 20 had died, except for two faithful people, Joshua and Caleb. Near the end of their years of wandering, the Israelites ran out of water like they had several times before. Instead of trusting God, they again complained to Moses, who was tired of hearing them whine. Moses prayed and God told him to speak to a rock. God would make water flow from the rock, enough for all the people and their animals. But instead of speaking to the rock, Moses yelled at the people and hit the rock two times with his rod. Even though Moses had disobeyed, God still made water flow from the rock. But Moses' disobedience angered God, and he punished Moses. He decided that Moses would not lead the Israelites into the Promised Land. When it was time to enter the land, Moses gathered the people. He said, I am 120 years old now, and God has told me that I cannot go into the promised land with you. Don't be afraid, Moses assured them. Be strong and brave. God himself will go with you, and he will not leave you. Moses brought his assistant Joshua before the Israelites. The people knew Joshua. He had been with them all these years. He was young when he left Egypt with them and walked through the Red Sea. He had been with Moses when he went up Mount Sinai to get the commandments. He had led the army against the Amalekites and had been one of the faithful spies. Joshua had been obedient to God and to Moses. Moses reminded Joshua of the same things he had just told the Israelites. God promised this land to our ancestors, Moses said. Joshua, you are going to lead the people into it. Don't be afraid. God will go before you, and he isn't going to leave you. 
As a reminder to the Israelites to serve God after Moses was gone, he gave the record of God's law to the priests. God's law includes the first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Let this book be a reminder of God's commands and his goodness to Israel, Moses said to the priests. Read this law out loud to the people of Israel every seven years so they will respect God and obey him. Then Moses and Joshua went to the tabernacle to meet with God, who came to them in a pillar of cloud. God told Moses that the Israelites would not obey his commands after Moses was dead. God said the Israelites would enjoy the land, but instead of worshiping God for all he did for them, they would worship false gods. God would have to discipline the Israelites for their actions. To remind the Israelites to obey, God wanted Moses to write a song about God's ways. God spoke to Joshua next. Be strong and courageous. You are going to bring my people into the land I promised to give them. Moses' song was about the ways that God had taken care of Israel in the past. In the song, Moses called God the rock and said God's ways were perfect. When the Israelites sang the song in years to come, it would remind them of God's faithfulness to them and that God expected them to obey and respect him. If they didn't, God would discipline them. Moses encouraged the people to pass the law on to their children because they would need its reminders in the promised land. Then Moses gave his final blessing to each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Moses went to the top of Mount Nebo where God spoke to him. This is the land I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God said. I have let you see it, but I cannot let you enter it. There Moses died, because he had disobeyed God by striking the rock. God himself buried Moses' body in a valley in the land of Moab, where no one was able to find it. Even though Moses was 120 years old when he died, he was still strong and healthy. Moses would have been strong enough to lead the Israelites into the Promised Land. The people of Israel mourned Moses' death for 30 days, and when the days had ended, the people followed their new leader, Joshua. God remained faithful to Moses through Moses' many years of leading God's people. Joshua could count on God to be faithful to him, too. God is still faithful. He will never leave us or refuse to hear our prayers. We can count on him to keep his promises and help us obey him. We should gladly put our trust in God and always obey his word. As much as it must have pained Moses to stay behind, he had to be thrilled with what he saw from the top of Mount Nebo. After 40 years of wandering and wandering, God had done exactly what he promised. He was about to give his people a new home, a land flowing with milk and honey, where they could live in peace, so as long as they kept God first. The Israelites and their journey to the Promised Land is a story very much like our own. You see, God is preparing a paradise for us as well. He is making a home for us in a place called heaven. And if we believe in Jesus, we will be saved. Our memory verse for this week is found in Psalm 31, verse 5. Into your hands I commit my very life. Lord, set me free. You are my faithful God. Hey, Agla's parents! Make this week's lesson real. Talk to your kids about where you might go or will go on your next vacation. Then ask them what they know about getting into heaven. How do they know that they're going for sure? Hello kids, do you know what time is it? Yes, it's trivia time and this week we will have true or false. If your answer is true, just answer true. Okay, and if it's false, just do false. Question number one. Moses was the first to enter the promised land. Is it true or false? What do you think, kids? The answer is false! Question number two. Moses got to see the promised land. Do you think, guys, he saw the promised land? Yes, the answer is true! Question number 
Hurry! God is preparing a place for us in heaven. Oh. What did you learn guys in the story? The answer is true. Okay, question number four. God expects us to learn or God expects us to earn admission into heaven. Is it true or false? The answer is false. Question number five. And we're heading to the last question. Jesus has already paid the price so we can go to heaven. And the answer is true. Okay, kids. Thank you for helping me answer again those five questions in our trivia time. So see you again next time. Bye. Here's a graphic idea for you. Have the kids create a road sign of heaven like the ones they see on the highways. Use green paper for the sign and white crayons or even white tape to make the lettering. Paradise vacations are really expensive. Ask any parent who has taken their kids to Disney or even priced it out. And they can tell you, it costs thousands of dollars for a family of four to take even the least expensive trip to Disney World. Airline tickets to Hawaii are expensive as well. So are hotels on the beach or destination cities like New York and LA. A quiet little place like Gatlinburg with its many shops and restaurants. And yes, tourist traps can add up to be quite an expensive week. Heaven is no different. You see, the Bible tells us that we are all sinners, which means we have all been separated from our perfect God. The price of sin, the Bible tells us, is death. That there is a price no man or woman can pay. But God could! God sent His Son Jesus to die for us. He raised Jesus to life three days later, and now Jesus is seated at God's right hand. Now. Um, God is preparing a promised land for us. He has paid the price of admission in full. There is only one thing that remains. We have to accept the invitation. If you are ready to make your reservation, you can ask Jesus to be your, yes your, Savior today. You will not only receive eternal life in heaven, but a new life on earth. God will send you His Holy Spirit to live in your heart, and you'll begin a daily walk with Jesus as your personal Savior, I mean personal Lord and Savior. God knows life can be a long and hard road, and He doesn't want us to go, to, I mean to go alone. He wants to go with us, and He wants to get us into paradise when it is over. If you haven't made Jesus your Savior, let today be the day. Jesus is waiting, and He's already prepared a place for you. Book your trip to the promised land of heaven today. Please talk to your small group. Um, please talk to your small group or your parents today if you want to know more about accepting Jesus Christ as your savior. Let's close with a simple prayer. Dear God, thank you for making heaven for us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The dog kids, I hope to see you next week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And always um, pray to God and accept Him as your Savior so we can go to the promised land of heaven. Bye!